Given how seriously important winning lane is in this patch for the sake of a positive match outcome, it's become increasingly paramount that players do their utmost during the initial laning stages of the game. This video aims to give you a brief yet concise overview of the most important timings a support player in particular can make use out of, in order to dominate the early game and set their team up for a winning match. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to my YouTube. I put a lot of effort and time into doing weekly content and have been doing so for a while now. One of the most important aspects of winning lane in this meta is the aspect of staying dominant and shoving out your opponent by means of aggression. We're mainly going to focus on the timings in which a lot of conflicts will take place in particular. As an additional heads up, I don't go into the depth of the water runes that spawn at 2 and 4, because there's usually so much lane aggression in this meta. Starting at 0 on game start, a support already has a lot going for them, since rune spawn in 733 very often results in a first blood due to how aggressive people play in this patch. You can try and do the safe play and get the runes on your side, or you can try and go for the more offensive play and get a hold of the enemy's runes, which could end up being quite challenging depending on what the enemy does on game start themselves. Alternatively, it is also possible for you to gather up your own team and ask them to invade the enemy jungle, or counter invade your own jungle in a hope to run into the enemy's lineup and pick up some kills combined with initial rune spawn. How to approach this generally depends on the lineup you have available as a team, with a stronger early game lineup favoring this type of aggression more. Our very first interesting interaction on lane happens to be that of minute 3, because two very important things spawn at the same time, which happens to be Lotus and Bounty Rune. Lotus spawns right next to your lane and is a very powerful usable item in order to heal yourself or your ally, on top of giving mana. This can be crazy strong for winning lanes, since it lets you clutch heal on demand, making it so much harder for the opponent to kill off a hero. Even more so, because the Lotus is such a coveted item, it is not at all unlikely that a scuffle will take place for it. This scuffle in of itself can often result in a kill, and you can use this as an opportunity, but should also be aware of the deadly circumstances if you're not careful. The other objective is the enemy bounty rune, and while it's often the easier target to steal, you'll be leaving your lane partner on his own for a brief moment, which doesn't have to be bad, assuming he doesn't end up getting killed. The benefit if you manage to snatch the bounty rune is that you'll be giving everyone, including yourself, a bit of extra gold, and you'll be denying the mid hero in particular the ability to run up and refill his bottle which can seriously impair how well he wins mid against your mid laner. It's a double whammy. Next up on the list is minute 5, which is that of nighttime happening. This one was always there, but it's so much more prevalent now because during nighttime, every hero on the map now gets 15 flat movement speed. This buff isn't given for no reason either, and is clearly a way to encourage people to spur into action and skulk around on the map promoting ganking of every kind. You will now have an easier time when you briefly leave your initial lane and trying to score a kill whether it is trying to do so on the mid lane or going for a kill on your opposite side lane. This is also exactly why the nearby teleporter is as strong as it is. By utilizing this timing, your added movement speed as well as the now shorter sight range of your enemies, you can so much easier get the jump on them, which can result in some juicy early kills propelling your team forward. At minute 6, we'll have a repetition of minute 3, in the fact that the same rules still apply, and the support player will have to decide whether or not they want to focus on acquiring the lotus or going for the bounty rune steal. Furthermore, this is also when the first power rune spawns, which, when utilized by your mid player correctly, can completely change who's in charge and who's not. It is a possibility for either position 4 or 5 to opt in towards going to the river in order to protect the rune that spawns, in order to prevent the opposing mid from acquiring it and giving it to their own. With the new added timings, this has certainly become a bit harder to do if you also want to contest Lotus and Bounty Rune, but it's still a super important objective spawn that a support should know that they can play around. Then, at minute 7, a new player comes into town, which is that of the newly added Wisdom Rune. Wisdom Rune spawns near the ancient camp of both teams and can be acquired by anyone. When done so, you and the other lowest XP hero on your team get a sizable amount of XP, which will give you a neat advantage over your enemy. This timing is very important, because the clever support player can opt in to actually trying to steal the enemy Wisdom Rune at the time it spawns. And, if it's a timer you're not thinking of, it might very well be that the enemy support plans on doing it to you. If both enemy supports grab a hold of each Wisdom Rune, the two of them will juggle XP between each other, and since they're very often the lowest XP on each team, they now each search up way further, and often makes them very close to level 6, which is downright dangerous. From here on out, we have two repetitions that happens before the game turns from nighttime back to daytime, which is at minute 8 where another power rune will spawn on the mid river, and then once more at minute 9, there'll be yet another lotus near the side lane, combined with the bounty rune spawn in Radiant and Dire Jungle. Finally, we arrive at daytime, which happens exactly at 10 minutes, and things get a little bit more calm. 
Heroes now lose that extra movement speed they had, and everyone has more natural vision than they had before. Unless you're a bad rider. These are the first 10 minutes of the game that are absolutely essential for your success in this patch, both as a support and a core. While a lot of these objectives is something the support preferably has to run after, doing so might be impossible without the aid of a core, mainly that of Lotus. There are certainly a whole lot of timers associated with this patch, and while it can be very hard to remember, making the effort to do so and making use out of them will significantly impact the overall quality of your game. You have your work cut out for you as a support in this patch. But in this difficulty of timings also lie the potential for setting up a game super hard for the rest of the team. You really can be a massive game changer this patch when you get the hang of the first 10 minutes of the game. I hope this video proved insightful to you, and if you like this content, I would yet again love if you would consider subscribing to my YouTube channel to help my content grow. I can also be seen live at twitch.tv slash fabkyobashi, and there's also a discord group in the description of the video, where you can chat with people and get a hold of me for any game related questions. Thank you for watching, and best of luck in both remembering and utilizing the very important timings this patch has to offer.